welcome to Pastor Pete in His Pajamas, where I share with you my favorite Bible stories while wearing my pajamas. Now today we have a particularly interesting story of how the Israelites crossed a body of water on dry ground. Now I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking that we already talked about this. We remember that when the Israelites were fleeing Egypt that God parted the sea and allowed them to pass through safely. But did you know that God actually parted another body of water? That God allowed the Israelites to pass across a river on dry land? You see, for the last 40 years, the Israelites have been wandering in the desert. And God has promised that he would bring them into a land of milk and honey. And now Joshua is standing at the verge of entering this new promised land that the Israelites will claim for their own, but before him stands an obstacle, the Jordan River. Now at this time, the Israelites wouldn't have been good swimmers. And so this Jordan River would have been a significant barrier standing in their path. It wasn't like the little creek that I'm sitting by here. Instead, it was expansive. And so I'm sure the Israelites, who have a track record of complaining, began to mumble and groan. But God, just as he always did, provided. Today, we're going to pick up the story that comes to us from Joshua 1 in our big picture interactive Bible storybook. If you have it at home, read along with me. It says, after Moses died, God made Joshua the leader of the Israelites. Then God said, get the people ready to cross over the Jordan River and go into the promised land. So early the next morning, Joshua and all the Israelites traveled to the Jordan River. On the other side of the river was the promised land, the land of Canaan. They camped there for three days. Then Joshua said, make yourselves clean. God is going to do great things tomorrow. God told Joshua to have the priests carry the Ark of the Covenant, sometimes called the Ark of God, and stand in the water at the edge of the Jordan River. Then Joshua said to the people, God is here with us. He will defeat our enemies for us. When the priests carrying the ark stand in the river, the waters will stop. So the priests carried the ark to the river. As soon as their feet touched the water's edge, the water stopped and stood up on one side of them. Then the Israelites crossed to the Jordan River on dry ground. After everyone had crossed, God told Joshua to choose one man from each of the 12 tribes of Israel. Each man was to take a stone from the middle of the river and set it down where the Israelites would spend the night. After the men took the stones from the river, the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant crossed over to the other side. As soon as their feet stepped out of the riverbed, the waters started to flow again. Joshua set up the 12 stones. Then he said to the Israelites, when your children ask their fathers, what do these stones mean? Tell them how Israel crossed the Jordan on dry ground. For God dried up the waters of the Jordan, just as he did at the Red Sea. This is so that all the people of the earth will know that the Lord is mighty. What a great story about how God works in miraculous ways to provide for his people. You see, I don't want to focus today on the miracle. Instead, I want to focus on those 12 stones that the Israelites took from the dry Jordan riverbed. They took them out and Joshua piled them up to be a reminder for the next generations of Israelites of how God had provided for them. Today, we call these piles of stones a cairn. And we use these cairns for one of two reasons. First, a hiker might use a cairn uh, to represent a significant milestone that they've achieved. Maybe they're climbing a mountain and they finally reached the summit. And so they'll pile up these stones at the peak of this mountain to tell the world of their accomplishment. But the other way that Karens are used is that hikers will use them along the trail to pile up little stones so that they will be reminded of where they came from. 
so that as they begin to head back home, there will be these little markers leading the way. Well, you see, God asked the Israelites to build a cairn so that they could remember his provision. But the truth is, is that we build cairns in our own lives, but we don't do them with rocks. Instead, they look more like trophies sitting on a bookshelf. How many of us have a medal or a little golden statue that reminds us of a race that we ran, a, a team that we played for, or a championship that we won? We might remember our past experiences through a photo album. We look back on pictures of our childhood and special birthdays and, and events that took place. And every once in a while we turn back to these things and we fondly remember a significant experience, experience in our life. But you see, very few of us have these kind of keepsakes for our spiritual journey. Very few of us have a photo album of that time that we gave our life to Jesus and we prayed the sinner's prayer. I doubt anyone has a statue on a bookshelf of a time that God allowed us to step past our fears or triumph over our anxieties. We don't have a plaque with the first verse that we ever memorize with the date underneath. Instead, we allow those memories to just sit in our minds. But this story points out how important it is to commemorate these significant moments. And so our challenge today is to take some time to think back over our own spiritual journey, over our relationship with Jesus, and to think about those really significant moments in our faith and begin to make our own kind of symbol of how God has worked in our lives. To pile up these rocks, so to speak, so that every time we look at them, we will be reminded, A, of the accomplishment that we have achieved in our faith, but B, we will be reminded of where we came from, and that is God who always provides for us. So that in moments where our faith is not as strong, we can look back at these piles of stones that lead us back to our Lord and Savior. Thanks so much for joining us today. I hope that this will be a challenge for us to look back at the significant moments of our faith and be encouraged by them and reminded to always set our eyes on Jesus.